The Book of Boba Fett is a live-action television series focusing on the character Boba Fett with its first episode released on December 29, 2021. It was first teased, with its title and release window, in a post credit sequence of the Season 2 finale of The Mandalorian. The Book of Boba Fett, a thrilling Star Wars adventure, finds legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett and mercenary Fennec Shan navigating the galaxy's underworld when they return to the sands of Tatooine to stake their claim on the territory once ruled by Jabba the Hutt and his crime syndicate. Boba Fett made his full return to Star Wars in The Mandalorian's Chapter 14, The Tragedy, an episode that was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Rodriguez was originally approached by series executive producer Jon Favreau to direct the important episode. Favreau loved Rodriguez's interpretation of the character, so Favreau decided to pitch to Rodriguez and the studio the idea of creating more episodes. Although Rodriguez usually avoided franchises, that changed with Boba as Rodriguez felt that he was an underserved character and that it was as if he was an original character Rodriguez could expand. Reports of a Boba Fett-centered Disney Plus miniseries first surfaced online in early November 2020. The reports also mentioned that the series' filming had begun. On December 10, 2020, Kathleen Kennedy teased that the next chapter of The Mandalorian would arrive on Christmas of 2021. Although many fans perceived this to be the third season of The Mandalorian, Chapter 16, The Rescue, the season 2 finale of The Mandalorian released on December 18, 2020, teased that the Book of Boba Fett would be the show to arrive in that time frame. The following Monday, show producer Jon Favreau appeared on Good Morning America on the ABC television network. He clarified that the two were separate shows, with the Book of Boba Fett arriving first. A StarWars.com post later that day reiterated this and stated that The Mandalorian Season 3 would go into production in 2021. Filming officially wrapped on June 8, 2021, and the series was still in post-production as of September of that year. Chapter 1, Stranger in a Strange Land The episode opens with a landscape shot of the surroundings of the late Jabba's palace on Tatooine. Several interior shots are captured including the Barbican, Jabba's throne room and the empty band stage. In a separate chamber, Boba Fett is submerged inside a Bacta tank. He experiences flashbacks of watery Camino and Tipaka City, followed by a grieving Boba cradling the helmet of his fallen father Jango Fett at the Petronaki Arena on Geonosis. In another flashback, Fett struggles within the digestive system of the Sarlacc. Turning on an inbuilt sensor inside his helmet, he sees the remains of a stormtrooper. Fett retrieves an oxygen unit from the stormtrooper's armor before punching a hole through the Sarlacc's gun. He then fires a flamethrower. Fett then climbs out of the Sarlacc onto the sands of the Great Pit of Karkoon, which is littered with the wreckage of Jabba's sail barge Ketana. A weakened Fett climbs out the pit and lies on the desert ground. Later that night, Fett is discovered by a party of Jawas, who strip the armor from his body. They also take his jetpack. Fett awakes but one of the Jawas knocks him unconscious with a blaster. The Jawas return to their sandcrawler. Episode 2, Prisoner of the Tusken Raiders. The following day, a group of Tusken Raiders stumble upon the unconscious Boba Fett. One of them turns him over with his Gatterfy stick. Seeing the burnt and weakened Fett, they bind his hands with a rope. One of the Tuscans gives him a drink from a gourd. The Tuscans ride back to their clan with Fett bound behind a bantha. Fett is forced to walk through desert heat and sand and eventually collapses from exhaustion. They drag him through the sands to their encampment. Fett is bound to a wooden post and guarded by Tuscan sentries. Several adolescent Tuscans beat him with Gatterfy sticks, knocking him unconscious again. That night, Fett awakens at his post. Seated nearby is a captive Rodian with red skin. The two watch a nearby fire, where a massive rests. Fett struggles with his ropes, which draws the attention of the massive. The massive lunges at Fett and a fight breaks out. He knocks out the beast and uses its sharp teeth to cut his bonds. Fett asks the Rodian if he wants him to cut his bonds. A Tuscan sentry intervenes but Fett overpowers him, knocking the Gatterfy stick from his hands. The Rodian cries, alerting the rest of the Tuscan clan. Fett flees into the desert with the massive in hot pursuit. The creature catches up with him and he fights it with his stolen Gatterfy stick. The Tuscans catch up with him and watch. The beast returns to its Tuscan masters. A showdown between the Tuscans and Fett ensues. One of the Tuscans approaches him with a Gatterfy stick. After sizing each other, the two break into a duel. The Tuscan knocks Fett to the ground but Fett rises to his feet and fights back. The Tuscan knocks him down a second time but Fett is still determined to continue the fight. The Tuscan beats him repeatedly. The other Tuscans surround him with one kicking him to the ground. 
Fett slips into unconsciousness. Episode 3, Holding Court. In the present, Fett is woken up by Fennec Shand. Fett wakes up and suspends his healing session. The back to tank's doors open and he climbs out of the machine. As a droid fetches him a towel, Fett tells Shan that the dreams are coming back. Shan reminds him that they are expecting guests who have come to pay their respect. Droids dress Fett in his Mandalorian armor. Fett dons the helmet himself. In Jabba's former throne room, an Aqualish delegate speaks in the Aqualish language and presents a box of credit chips. The droid 8D8 retrieves the chips. When Fett asks what the Aqualish said, Shand explains that he said something about friendship. Fett says that they really need a protocol droid. 8D8 presents Doc Strassi, the leader of the Trandoshan family and the protectors of most Espa city center and its business territories. Fett recalls that he used to work for Doc. Doc addresses Fett as the new daimyo. Fett says that it is a pleasure to be welcomed to most Espa by Doc, who presents 8D8 with a rug. Doc wishes that Fett may never leave Mos Espa before walking away. Fett confides with Shan that the Trandoshan's compliment sounds like a threat. The next guest is Mokshais, the mayor of Mos Espa and its surrounding plateaus. The guest corrects that he is the mayor's majordomo. Shan recalls that the mayor was coming to pay tribute. The majordomo apologizes for the understandable misunderstanding in the mayor's correspondence. Fett extends his greetings and appreciation for the mayor's tribute. The Majordomo clarifies that this was another understandable misunderstanding and says that the only tribute that he bears is the mayor's heartfelt welcome, which he expresses in his stead. When Shand asks if he brings no tribute, the Majordomo reiterates the mayor's heartfelt welcome and claims that he has been drawn away by pressing matters. Shand warns the Majordomo that if he had showed the same insolence to the late Jabba, the hut would have fed him to his menagerie. The Majordomo apologizes. Fett tells the Majordomo to tell the mayor that he is here now. The Majordomo replies that he knows and raises the matter of tribute. Shand explains to Fett that the mayor wants Fett to pay him. Fett replies that he is the crime lord and that the mayor of Mos Espa is supposed to pay him. Shand wants to kill him but Fett disagrees, saying that the Majordomo works for the mayor. Shand tells the Majordomo that Lord Fett allows him to leave unmolested. The Majordomo apologizes and says that he will convey Fett's sentiment to the mayor. The Majordomo warns Fett and Shan that they will receive another delegation in the future. Fett tells Shan to keep an eye on Ma. 8D8 then has an unidentified character bring in two Gamorian prisoners, who had served Jabba and then transferred their allegiance to the late Bib Fortuna. They did not surrender even after their patron was killed. 8D8 says that they were captured alive as a tribute to Fett and says that their tortured squeals will send a message to potential challengers to his throne. Fett says he does not torture. 8D8 counsels his master to show strength in order to win acceptance as a daimyo. Complimenting their loyalty to their previous bosses, Fett offers to spare the lives of the Gamorians if they were to serve him. The Gamorians bend the knee and submit to Fett. Shand warns him that this is a bad idea. Episode 4, Trip to Mos Espa. Fett and Shan later travel with their two new Gamorian bodyguards to Mos Espa. Shan chides Fett for not letting them carry him on a litter. Fett says that he doesn't want to be carried around like a useless noble. Shand explains that this is a sign of power and that people in Mos Espa are used to seeing the huts being paraded around the streets. Shand says that things would have gone a lot smoother if he had accepted their ways. At a cantina, Max Rebo and a Bith musician perform. Fett and Shand enter the bar with their Gamorian bodyguards. An astromech droid asks if they are here for drinks. Shand replies that they are here for business with Madame Garcifuit. Two Twi'leks ask if they would like their helmets cleaned while they wait for Garza. Shan declines but Fett allows them to take both their helmets in order to accept their ways. Madame Garza Fwip turns out to be a female Twi'lek with olive skin. She welcomes them to the sanctuary and asks if they would like any of their sundry offerings. Fett says maybe another time and gets down to business. Garza asks if he would like his Gamorian guards to be given refreshments while they are sequestered. Fett replies that it won't take long and offers to do it here. Fett introduces his master assassin Fennec Shand and explains that he has replaced Bib Fortuna. Garza apologizes that she did not see his litter, prompting Fett to say that he prefers to walk on his own two feet. Fett explains that he is here to introduce himself and reassures her that her business will continue under his watchful eye. Garza thanks him for traveling to the sanctuary and says that he is always welcome, granting Fett ownership. The Twi'lek attendants return their helmets, with Shand remarking that Fett's helmet looks shinier than hers, being full of credits. While departing the sanctuary, 
Fett tells Shan that Jabba had many vassals and that they have a lot of ground to cover to keep his empire intact. Shand offers to cover the rounds on her own, saying that Jabba rarely left his chambers. Fett replies that Jabba ruled by fear while he intends to rule by respect. Shand counters that in difficult times, fear is a sure bet. Episode 5, The Ambush The two are then ambushed by six crimson-clad figures armed with plasma pikes and energy shields, who surround them. Fett instinctively fires a rocket, whose blast is deflected back by an energy shield, knocking both helmets loose, the credits in Fett's helmet fly everywhere to be picked up by bystanders. A fight ensues, with Fett and Shan barely holding their own before the Gamorians come to their aid, breaking the circle created by the ambushers and providing the respite Fett and Shan needed to regain their balance and the upper hand. Together they dispatch three of the attackers, leading the other three to attempt to escape. Fett fires a rocket at one, disintegrating and partially blowing up a rooftop. The other two who had climbed to the rooftops ahead of their disintegrated compatriot are chased by Shan, who retrieves her helmet on the way to the wall. As she reaches the rooftop, Fett tells her to capture them alive, before telling the Gamorians to get him back to the back to pod. Shan chases the two survivors across the rooftops, all performing feats of acrobatics and athleticism. She finally reaches them but is forced to dive off a rooftop to escape a counterattack, allowing the two to continue their escape. As they round a corner, they come face to face with Shan, who has gained the lead. She disarms the two, before knocking one off the rooftop to his death and capturing the other. Episode 6, Trials of the Past Following the assassination attempt, Fett is put into the back to tank by one of the Gamorians, where he experiences another flashback into his past following the rescue of Han Solo. Following his unsuccessful escape attempt, Fett is woken up by a young Tuscan and led away by his bound hands, with his feet chained to the captive Rodian who follows. Together with a domesticated Messi, they trek across the desert and make a slight detour after seeing smoke. They peer over a sand dune to see a homestead, with several beings beating a man, hanging a symbol on the walls of their homestead before getting on speeder bikes and riding off. Moving on, the trio come to a stop, where the Tuscan gestures for the two captives to dig, searching for a gourd filled with liquid, a source of water. The Rodian finds one before Fett, who takes a drink. Fett soon finds one for himself. Before he can drink, the Tuscan child takes the gourd from Fett, pouring it out for the massive to drink with some spilling onto the dry sands of Tatooine. Continuing to dig for the gourds, Fett tells the Rodian that they could have both escaped had he kept his snout closed. Fett says that if he can get to Anchorhead, he can get them off world. Fett grumbles about strangling the Rodian and feeding him to the watchdog. The Rodian returns an insult in Rodian, which Fett can understand. While continuing their dig, the Rodian discovers a large scaly mass under the sands. Excavating the mass, it stirs to live to reveal a large three-clawed hand, grabbing the Rodian's arm. More arms come out of the sand before the entire beast reveals itself as a six-legged reptile capable of standing on its hind legs. Grabbing the captives, the creature starts attacking, with the massive counter-attacking before being thrown away by the creature, which then kills the Rodian. Fett is held up and the Tuscan stabs the creature's foot, resulting in the creature throwing Fett and hitting the Tuscan, causing him to hurtle onto the sands. The creature turns from Fett and goes after the Tuscan adolescent. However, Fett runs up the creature's back and wraps the chains around its neck and asphyxiates the creature. Fett's actions earns him the respect of the adolescent Tuscan. The Tuscan, Fett and the Massive return to the Tuscan camp with the creature's head as a trophy. Their return sparks a celebration among the Tuscan clan, with the adolescent Tuscan regaling his people with stories of the battle with the reptilian creature. The leader of the camp wordlessly hands Fett a gourd out of gratitude, which he drinks. So what else? What's missing? Please let me know in the comments below, smash the like button. If you enjoyed the video and remember to subscribe to the channel and ping the notification bell before you go. And finally, thank you so much for watching folks. It's been a hell of an I can't wait to see what the next one has installed. Whatever happens, keep calm and hodl on. Happy New Year, everyone!